What do you guys think? Meth lab or mine cam? <laughs> Hello, Wonder Hussy here, just driving around the desert with my sister, headed to explore the Kingston Range. This magnificent little mountain range, which happens to be right in my backyard, marks the transition zone between the northern part of the Mojave Desert and the southern part of the Great Basin. And I guess because it's sort of a mix of the two ecosystems, botanists have identified more than 500 species of native plants in these mountains, about 30 of which are rare or threatened. Now, this isn't a super high mountain range. Kingston Peak is only about 7,300 feet high. But relative to the surrounding landscape, these mountains really stand out, especially because there's actual trees at the top which is very unusual for this part of the desert. Okay, our first stop on the tour of the Kingstons is this little prospector's homestead. I think it's called Crystal Spring. Okay, I wasn't able to find any of the history about this place out, but to me, it seems pretty evident that some guy was living out here, probably all by himself, because this is a real small little cabin, probably poking around in them there Kingston Hills for some kind of juicy, sweet ore. Now, unfortunately, this cabin has seen better days, but at one time, I'm sure it was real cozy. One room shack. Looks like that was probably the kitchen. Guy even had a shower and a bathtub. How about that? Anyway, yeah, just a small cabin. Big enough for one guy, but he wasn't totally uncivilized. He had electricity as well as running water. And the running water here comes from the fact that, well, I told you it was called Crystal Spring. I think there's actually a spring right up the hill here. I mean, obviously there's some kind of water here because there's a palm tree growing, which is very non-native to this part of the desert. Look at these, these are vines. This is, I think this is a coyote melon. I don't know if these are edible for humans, but they're basically like, little miniature pumpkins look how cute that is oh my gosh look at these little pods i'm not a botanist so i don't really know what any of this is but these are cool and it just goes back to what i was saying about how there's 500 different species of plants in these mountains i mean it's absolutely amazing look at this hillside <laughs> okay well maybe not the buried wrecked car although gosh that's probably pretty interesting too is that even a car oh my gosh it's like some kind of Crazy collapsed mess here. Anyway, not just that, but look at all these choya cactus, barrel cactus. I mean, there's barrel cactus popping out all over this hillside. And then what's this little tree? Man, I don't know much about trees, but look at the leaves on that. That definitely doesn't look like it's native. It must've been planted here by the guy who was living in that little cabin. Just right over there. God, I always forget how interesting it is out here. And my sister has actually never been out this way before. Even though right now I think we're only like 30 miles from the house, she's never been out here. So this is a really fun adventure for her. Ugh, there's also a ton of burrow poo out here. And I guess cow poo? I think this is open rangeland. Uh, so there's probably cattle roaming around somewhere. And there's probably well, I don't know if there's burrows, but there's definitely bighorn sheep. And the reason all this animal poo is up here is there's this natural spring up here in the canyon. And I think the BLM or some government agency actually put in a guzzler of some sort up here for these animals to drink out of. Look at these big cottonwood trees. This is like a real oasis back here. Life-giving desert oasis. Imagine you're out here in this very harsh landscape. I mean, beautiful, but very harsh. And you're prospecting, you're trying to find a vein of gold or silver, and you're looking for a place to set up your camp, and you stumble upon this beautiful, shady, well, I don't know if these cottonwoods are native or if somebody planted them, but look, yeah, there's a good water source. That's a guzzler, and it's not even really a guzzler, it's a tank for all the animals to feed out of. But this water is coming 
from up here somewhere. Well, it's fenced off with barbed wire because I think they want to keep the animals out of the source. But I think we can get through. Oh yeah, right over there. Yeah, see, there's a gate here, but we don't even need to go through the gate. There's a, I think this is called a style where you just go through this. Not sure, but wow, look. Look how cute there's this little rock lined path that leads all the way up into the shadow of these really big, nice shady cottonwood trees. And I'll bet you anything, that's where this water source is coming out. Matter of fact, when the prospector lived here, it looks like he had some kind of big stone holding tank over here. Look at that. Maybe that was his swimming pool. Wouldn't that be nice to have? Oh my God, I gotta stop for a minute and do a panorama. This is absolutely beautiful. I mean, imagine you're floating here in your little private homemade rock swimming pool in the shade of this beautiful cottonwood in the shadow of these craggy, magnificent little mountains. And I keep calling them little mountains because you know, 7,300 feet, that's not really that high out in this part of the country. I mean, Mount Whitney, the highest point in North America or continental North America is, you know, just a couple hundred miles away. So for these parts, 7,300 feet really isn't that high. But if you're from, you know, Florida or someplace flat, you probably think I'm crazy. Okay, there's some kind of pipe coming out of the ground, but the water, I think originally comes out of the mountain way up here. You can see it's still real swampy. Oh wow, I don't know if you can see these beautiful blue dragonflies buzzing on the water. Oh my gosh, there's like a little cave back here. Oh, I wonder if this was the mine where he was prospecting. Oh my gosh, these butterflies. Ah, <laughs> this is absolutely amazing up here. I am ashamed to say I hardly ever come up here myself. Oh my gosh, wow. This is the source of Crystal Spring. So that little mucky, kind of stream we've been walking through. It comes out of this cave and look at the cave. The cave is full of crystal clear water. Oh my gosh. Now I know why they call it crystal spring. Look how clear that is and what a beautiful color. Man, it's very tempting to take a skinny dip in there, but I wouldn't want to pollute beautiful crystal spring with my foul ass. <laughs> Even though no one's drinking this water anymore. I mean, well, except for the animals and I'm pretty sure the animals don't really care. <laughs> Look, there's game cameras on the side of this rock here. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> I told my sister to go look at that spring. Isn't that amazing? Oh, look, my sister found some mint. Did you taste it? I mean, does it taste like mint? Wow, that's amazing. We can have mint juleps. Mmm, Kingston mint juleps. Okay, my sister said there's something she wants to ask my opinion on up here. Oh, what do I think that is? Oh my gosh. Well, let's go take a look at it. Emergency eye wash. It's from the mine. Those are the two things you put uh, your eyes on and blast the chemicals out of your eyes. It says it on the back. Okay, that's, that's, I thought it was an eye wash. I was like, are people making a meth up here? Why would there, why oh, would that have been no. washing Well, it's probably this? just, maybe it came down from, well, maybe somebody was making meth up I here. I mean, I guess a mining camp might have that too. What do you guys think? Meth lab or mine camp? Wow, this truly is a desert oasis. But the real oasis is up at the top of the pass through the Kingston Mountains at Horse Thief Springs. I already made a video at this place once, but my sister has never been here. So let's get out and poke around. Okay, if you watched the other video I made here, well, you might remember this. Basically, this little oasis is called Horse Thief Springs or Horse Thief Camp because a bunch of horse thieves used to hang out here back in the day. And the sign is really old and really blistered, but this right here is one seriously bad ombre named Chief Wakara. I think that's how you pronounce it, Chief Wakara. He was chief of the Timpanogo Band of Utes and he was a horse thief. And this dude ranged all the way over to the Cajon Pass, which is the mountain pass between the high desert and the LA basin. This guy covered a huge range. Obviously it was easy pickings, stealing horses from the settlers, the pioneer trains coming west, the old Mormons on the Mormon trail, the old Spanish trail. So the, apparently back in the day, a bunch of notorious horse thieves used to hang out at this gorgeous oasis tucked away up here in the Kingston mountains. Cause like I said, Crystal Springs is an oasis. <laughs> but this right here, 
is the true oasis. Let's see what kind of plants we can find up here. I don't know what these yellow flowers are, but they're absolutely beautiful. And you can see there's tons of trees over here. Obviously an even bigger water source than Crystal Springs. Now today is September 28th, so it's early fall, kind of almost still late summer. If I came back here a month from now, there would be all kinds of gorgeous fall colors all throughout here. And then of course this awesome old wooden cabin hidden in the brush where all these horse thieves used to hang out and play cards and drink whiskey and tell tall tales and probably get in fights and shoot each other. In this old cabin made out of railroad ties, nestled in the shadow of the beautiful Kingston Mountains. Golly, doesn't this look like something out of an old Western movie? I mean, look at this background. Absolutely stunning. So it definitely looks like people were living in here more recently than the days of Chief Wakara, which was in the late 1800s. I mean, this linoleum isn't that old. And neither are these plumbing valves or this shower, for that matter. Oh, here's a little bit of a newspaper. Gosh, it's so crumbly. No telling what year that's from, but well, maybe people were squatting up here until like the 1960s, 70s? Hmm, could this have been another Manson family hangout? I don't know, that's straight conjecture, but look how beautiful the view is out these windows. Oh my gosh, absolutely gorgeous. Gosh, look at all these beautiful flowers. I don't know the names of any of these gorgeous little reddish orange flowers. Or these beautiful yellow flowers. Mmm, they smell sweet too. But I do know that these big white trumpet lily looking things, pretty sure that's jimson weed. <laughs> Supposedly the Native American shamans used to get high. Like they'd make a tea, I guess, out of the jimson weed and well, I guess it would bring on these hallucinogenic visions. I'm not messing around with any of that today. Look at this beautiful pink flower. Wow, it's pretty lush back here, but I don't see any running water. I don't hear any running water. Looks like the creek is dry. So maybe Crystal Springs is the true oasis after all. Wow, look at that. It's an old power line. They had power out here. How about that? Oh, wow. Yeah, look. Big water tanks. I guess that's where they stored the water. I can see it trickling out there. Oh, yeah, it is. It's trickling out just barely. So that must be where the spring is. Oh, my God. There's bees swarming all over it. Now. This stuff here is beautiful and it smells amazing. Oh, yeah, that is very fragrant. Man, I gotta get a book about desert plants so I can learn what all these things are. Oh, look at this cute little campsite here. Somebody had a campfire. Nice grassy meadow to set up your tent in the shadow of these craggy peaks. And while I have always wanted to camp here at Horse Thief Springs, well, today my sister and I thought we might try something a little different. Even though we're only 30 miles from home, <laughs> we thought we might go backpacking. Okay, uh, when I was doing my research online, I thought this might be an interesting little trail we could backpack down and then find a place to camp a few miles into the hills there somewhere. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that this is not a trail. It's actually an off-road route, so we could have just driven down here. There's no need to lug heavy packs, but guess what? We already loaded up our packs. We packed all our gear. Even if we only hike a few miles, we're going to bushwhack, well, walk down this road and find a beautiful place to camp for the night. Because can you imagine a more, I mean, the stars are gonna be out of control. Actually, tonight's the full moon. It's a huge full harvest moon. So that in itself should be pretty spectacular. Okay, unfortunately, there's really no trail information on this sign. It's so blistered and baked and full of bullet holes. But uh, I think if we just walk down this Jeep trail, 
we'll be able to find something cool. I mean, you can see here, it says that there's a wilderness on either side of this road. So I guess 30 feet on either side of the center line of this road for the next 21 miles is a wilderness area. So if nothing else, we should backpack at least 30 feet off the side of this road and backpack in the wilderness tonight. And then look at the back of this sign. You know how people leave their stickers on signs like this? Well, I thought there was actually some really interesting stickers on this particular sign. Like, well, how about this one? Take a picture, not the plant. And it looks like one of those little coyote melons is <laughs> threatening some greedy person who's trying to steal it and take it home with them. I guess they don't want people coming out here gathering cactus. I mean, it looks like there's a lot of, look at this cactus holding a magic mushroom. Okay, that's right up my alley. Look at this, insane succulents. And cacti we trust, love that. Look, it's like a rosary with a cactus. And look at this little turtle, cactus quest. It's a little uh, desert tortoise. <laughs> and then there's the pink panther with a cactus coming out of his head. There's a old car full of cactus. I guess that's cactus quest too. Whoever this cactus quest group is, I'm gonna have to look them up because they seem pretty cool. And so we set off through the vast and desolate Kingston wilderness in search of a place to camp for the night. It was easy, low pressure backpacking, not just because we were walking along a Jeep trail, but also because we weren't trying to set any records or prove anything. We were just out to enjoy ourselves for an evening in the beautiful Mojave Desert. And it was beautiful. The late afternoon sunshine warmed the desert with the last rays of summer, bathing the Joshua trees in liquid gold. Although technically it was already early fall, the air was soft and gentle on our skin, and it was easy to believe that in the desert, summer would never end. But the lengthening shadows on the gently sloping hills reminded us that twilight was coming soon and we couldn't wander around forever, we had to find a place to shelter for the night. Okay, we're looking around trying to find a place to camp. We've hiked all of mm, three miles, but you know, we're just out here for the fun of it in this gorgeous valley. I mean, we're not in the Kingston Mountains themselves because it's real rocky and pokey up there and it'd be hard to find a soft place to lay your tent. But then again, it's going to be hard to find a soft place to lay your tent out here too. We sort of found this little area. Well, I hesitate to call it a meadow. But there's kind of like this carpet of little yellow flowers. It's not like the softest in the world, but it's also, it's pretty soft. Look at that when you move it. This is softer. I think this would be fine. We got a beautiful view. The moon is going to rise over there somewhere. Got some Joshua trees. Got some creosote bushes. Okay, well, you want to just set up here? Oh, my God. oh it looks like that's a yes. <laughs> ah. Woo! Huh. Finally got my tent set up. That took a minute. It's one of those backpacking tents that you have to use hiking poles as center supports for. And well, I find myself envying my sister and her super easy to assemble REI backpacking tent. I'm gonna have to get one of those. Anyway, we set up a great little campsite kind of in the lee of this little rise to try and block the wind. But you can see the wind is still blowing a little, but that's not gonna stop us. We're gonna hike up on top of this rise and watch this beautiful sunset. I don't often take the time to just sit and watch the sun set. I'm usually busy answering email or editing videos or posting on Instagram or doing squats, blah, blah, blah. So it was really nice to be out in the middle of nowhere with no cell signal, no Starlink, and no choice but to stare at the horizon and drink it all in to the very last drop. But even when the September sun finally dipped below the horizon, 
the show wasn't over. The night was just beginning, and it promised to be incredible. We built a fire to warm ourselves and watched an almost supernaturally full harvest moon rise above the Mojave in a spectacular display of nature's glory. And then we fired up the stove to boil some water for our dinner. <laughs> Dehydrated mountain house. Yummy! But honestly, it could have been hardtack and beef jerky. Anything tastes good when you're sitting around a campfire in the glow of a full moon, miles from civilization, sipping whiskey from a metal flask with your best friend who just happens to be your sister. It was nice to have the chance to just sit and talk without any distractions, but with our bellies full, the fire low, and the moon high in the desert night sky, it wasn't long before we were ready for bed. Good morning. It's uh, unexpectedly chilly. It's like fall just showed up overnight. Like yesterday seemed more like summer. Today, it's a beautiful, very still, kind of overcast morning. It's just really nice to sit here and drink coffee and enjoy the vast stillness of this weird no man's land. Really an amazing little place to camp. And one of the coolest things about it is oh, there's these yellow flowers just carpeting the desert everywhere. And it's late September. Today is September 29th, almost the end of September. It's like there was this reverse spring after the monsoons and all these little yellow flowers came up and they're just, I mean, seriously blanketing this entire valley and the best thing about them is they smell like it smells like indian food kind of like cumin i guess like this whole area just, i mean if you don't like indian food i guess it wouldn't be a good thing but it just sort of smells very softly and mildly of delicious indian food and i don't know anybody watching this is a botanist what these little flowers are but they smell amazing and look at that it looks like a little tiny miniature doll-sized bouquet of flowers. Here's another really cool plant. We don't know what this is, what these are called, but they look real Dr. Seussy. They have these seed pods. I don't know if you can see that. Super cool. Ah, it's such a beautiful morning out here. And since we're only 34 miles from home, well, there's really no rush to get going. So we're gonna enjoy the stillness of this early autumn morning. And I'm gonna try to hike up to the high point here and get a panoramic view of this amazing, desolate valley. Ah. 
Ah! <laughs> oh wow, this mylar balloon is really disintegrating. Well, they say these things never disintegrate. Apparently they do. I'll still take it with me and dispose of it properly at home. Wow, way out here where no one ever goes. Imagine that. Those balloons are everywhere. Oh my gosh, wow. Like you can see over there. Too. It is, it's like coral covering. Oh, wow, you sure can. It's like a mud covering. I wonder what does this. Wow, I love it. It makes these funky tubes. Look at that. Look at this weird mud tube. Oh, I look down there. There's like a little tiny, I don't know what that is, a little playa? Let's go check it out. Wow, what is this? Oh, a guzzler? Oh, we did! I've seen one of these up in uh, Corn Creek uh, Campground. I saw one of these. It's a guzzler. Wow. It's for feeding wildlife. It collects rainwater somehow, and then I think, I don't know if it comes out of here or what. Look, it says Water for Wildlife Volunteers Rehab 2016. Aww. Mm, I think it's not coming up. Water? There is water down there? There is. It just how are the animals supposed to get to it? Maybe they put their noses down there. I don't know. How about that? I thought it was going to be a little dry lake bed. A man-made guzzler. That's cool. Okay, now I want to hike all the way to the top of that peak and get a view, an amazing view of this valley. Yay, we made it! It's real windy up here, but we have an amazing 360 degree view of this gorgeous Kingston wilderness. I guess that's the Kingston Wash coming from the west there. That's Dumont Dunes over that way, Highway 127, Baker. I guess these are just sort of like foothills of the Kingstons. And back over this way, that's our camp is down that way. We kind of we kind of camped right outside the wash. And then there's the road that we hiked in on, which it keeps going for quite a ways. And now I'm very curious. I'm gonna have to come back here and explore uh, in my car sometime. And then there's the Kingston Mountains that we drove through to get here. And home is just on the other side, only 34 miles from here. How about that? I guess Kingston Peak, I don't know which one Kingston Peak is. It's 73, a little over 7,300 feet. And I do want to hike that sometime. It's not supposed to be a very pleasant hike. And I don't think there's anything at the top, like a register or anything, but it'd still be cool to do. We just didn't have time to do that on this trip. We just decided to come up this little mountain and it's pretty cool too. Well worth the climb. Wow, look at that, you can see the yellow. All that yellow color is those little tiny yellow flowers. No wonder this place smells like Indian food. Man, these caterpillars are everywhere. I think this is the time of year when they come out and they, I don't know, they spin like webs all over these bushes. I feel like I've seen that hiking in the desert in the fall. You see bushes just covered in white spider webby stuff. And I think these caterpillars are doing it because we've seen a bunch of them out here crawling in these bushes. Oh, and then I don't know if they wrap themselves up and then turn into butterflies or what. I'm going to have to do some investigating. Oh, wow. Look at these yellow flowers. These are even bigger than the other ones. Look at that. And these have a really amazing smell. They smell like dill pickles. So it's almost like this is some kind of dill if you look at it. Look at that. Doesn't that look like dill? Mm, tastes like dill. <laughs> Hopefully it's not poisonous. Woo wee, we made it back to camp. It is nippy, you can tell. Fall is definitely here, but I can't think of a better way or a better place to celebrate the changing of the seasons. Mmm, time for some breakfast now. And then unfortunately, I'm gonna have to pack up camp 
and hike on out of here. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Sad to leave this beautiful valley, but well, we only live 34 miles away. So I know I'll be back because I have a feeling there are many more mysteries hidden in the magnificent Kingstons. <laughs>